Welcome back to Bible study. Uh, we, if you haven't been watching for the last year, I'll just remind you that we're studying Isaiah. And we've reached chapter 37. Ian is going to read for yeah. us the first 13 verses, then Alan will pray. Yeah. We're reading in Isaiah 37, beginning at verse 1, and I'm reading in the New King James Version of the Bible. And so it was, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. Then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos. And they said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. For the children have come to birth, but there's no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of the Rabashaka, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God, and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Surely I will send a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a rumour and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Then the Rabshakanah returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he had departed from Lachish, and the king heard concerning Terahaka, the king of Ethiopia. He has come out to make war with you, so when he heard it, he sent messages to Hezekiah, saying, Thus you shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, say, saying, Do not let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Look, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to the lands by utterly destroying them. And shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered those whom my fathers have destroyed Gosan and Haran and Rezeph and the people of Eden who were in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of uh, Seth Arvayim, Hena and Eva? Amen. Thanks. Well done, Ian. <laughs> you got through the words. <laughs> <clears throat> Father, as we come before you again this evening to study your word, Every time we look into your word, we look to you. So one eye on the page and one eye to you to reveal to us whatever it is, Lord, that you want us to hear for this time. <coughs> In the same way that you sent a message through Isaiah back to Hezekiah with your words, may we receive from you tonight as we study. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <coughs> Amen. Amen. So it's the second half of um, what we were reading last week where uh, Hezekiah hears the message and the Lord apparently hears it as well. That's right. Sennacherib, <coughs> Sennacherib it, doesn't hear. Yeah. <laughs> if I can just back. take a couple of minutes yeah, to please do. Set, yeah. set this. All right, I think <clears throat> there's a convergence of secular history and biblical history, mm. which dates this, these events at around 701 BC, mm. all right, when Sennacherib comes against Jerusalem, threatens Hezekiah, and then withdraws. And in secular history, he acknowledges that he didn't actually conquer Jerusalem, but that he surrounded, caged Hezekiah. Mm. All right, so these are historic events. And most scholars reckon it happened at 701 BC. So what I'd like to do is go back to um, 2 Kings chapter 18 and read what happened in the years up to, because <clears throat> this is the 14th year of Hezekiah's reign. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. And 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 9, <clears throat> starts by saying, Now it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Now, this Shalmaneser mm. is an ancestor, probably the grandfather of uh, Sennacherib. Sennacherib. Yeah. So Sennacherib's grandfather mm -hmm. had already come and attacked Samaria 10 years previously in the fourth year of <coughs> Hezekiah's reign. Mm. Hezekiah was already on the throne in Judah and he would have known what was happening to his brethren mm. in Israel, that so they were under attack. Israel being the northern the kingdom. The northern kingdom. Yeah. Because they're related, they're distant cousins. Yeah. Mm. Which was why later on he sent messengers into Israel, the land of Israel, and say, come and celebrate Passover in Jerusalem. So he was aware, politically aware, of the strength of the Assyrians. Mm. If I may just carry on. Yeah, please. Verse? Verse 10 of 2 Kings 18. And at the end of three years, they took it. The Assyrians took Israel. Mm. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. The northern kingdom fell. Mm. Then the king of Assyria carried Israel away captive to Assyria mm. and put them in Halal and by the Harbor, the river Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes, because they did not obey the voice of Yahweh their God, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses the servant of Yahweh had commanded, and they would neither hear nor do them. Yeah. Well, we could just, it, it is amazing to look at the history, isn't it? Mm. To That's see right. That it sort of matches like a hand in the glove. To and then the in secular. the 14th year, Sennacherib uh, sent, yeah. uh, sent the Rabshakeh yeah. to Jerusalem because Jerusalem was yet unconquered at that time. Mm. So Hezekiah would be aware how vulnerable he is mm. in military terms, mm. and he has nothing left. Now, he, Egypt had failed him, Egypt had failed Israel. Mm. Mm. Israel was gone. Mm. This is not ancient history to him. Mm. It's in his reign, during his reign, all of this happened. Yeah. It's interesting that in a couple of, a couple of Bible studies ago, we, we looked at Egypt being the splintered reed. Yes. Mm. Um, and there's a, there's a hint in the passage that, that Ian read that basically Cush, mm. you know, that's one of the splinters that comes out, but doesn't actually injure Israel, but actually starts to march on, mm. on Sennacherib. Mm. So, it, so his taunt about Egypt being splintered worked against him mm. and not against Hezekiah. That's right. And if I might, sorry, yeah. I know I'm no, sort no, of taking no, over a little bit. Don't worry, Ian. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to sure. set the scene. Yeah. 2 Kings 18, if I may just carry on mm. uh, verse 13. Mm. And in the 14th year, the same year, but slightly a few months before mm. uh, the events in uh, Isaiah, yeah. all right? In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. Then Hezekiah, the king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Mm. So a lot of his kingdom, a lot of the fortified cities were taken. Jerusalem was left. So. Hezekiah tried to do a deal with the king of Assyria. Mm. I have done wrong. Turn away from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will pay. He's saying, I'll cough up. I'm sorry. Mm. All right. And the king of Assyria assessed Hezekiah's king of Judah 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. And okay. at that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord. He paid him off. That's right. And having paid him off, they came back for a second bite of the cherry and sent the rapture. That's what yeah. was happening. Yeah, yeah. So the question that arises from this, Ian, was Hezekiah wrong to say that he was wrong? Was too he too apologetic? Well, <laughs> it's... <laughs> 
Uh, that is a really interesting question yeah. because, because um, w when we look at the providence of God and the timing mm. of God, sometimes you just need time. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a great fan of Neville Chamberlain, mm -hmm. for example, in, in, in the great second world. Not yeah, many yeah. people no, are. No, no, it's good. It's another but, side of history. But, but Neville, Neville Chamberlain went through the tragedy of uh, the First World War, the, the Somme mm -hmm. and Passchendaele, mm -hmm. and he didn't want and his children's generation to go through a Second World War. Mm -hmm. So he compromised with, uh, with Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. and. Now he's 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 forever written down as someone who compromised the appeaser. The appeaser. However, during that period between uh, the uh, the mid 30s or the late 30s till 94, it allowed Britain to rearm. Uh, right. You know, things like the Spitfire was developed, mm. and, and if it wasn't for the appeasement of Chamberlain, and Baldwin, and Baldwin, and Baldwin and Jam uh, uh, mm. then, then what would uh, then Britain would have been defeated completely, mm. and and sometimes, sometimes you have to take the long view, uh, and sometimes you have to re do a realistic, and retreat in order to advance. And yeah. I know it would be very easy to criticise Hezekiah. Mm. But I wonder what we would do mm. in his in his situation. He was mm. he was yeah. biding his time. He was trying to protect his 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 people. Uh, now we, of course, knowing the beginning from the end, know that he, he didn't. You don't appease appeases in the end. Um, all you do is delay, yeah. Yeah. and perhaps the delay was a good thing. Mm. Just one thing out of your excellent. Um, setting the scene is that um, the timings you're talking about 10 years now 10 years doesn't seem a long time and if you're waiting for God to act or waiting for something it's, it's a, it seems a heck of a long time but between 1701 BC and 586 BC when Jerusalem fall there was a hundred years. There was 150 years before we saw the fulfillment of these prophecies where it talked about coming singing back yeah. into Zion. And, and, and the point I'm making is that we see things when we want God to act immediately, mm. next year, mm. next week. God has the bigger picture, you know, the, the prophecies that we have. You know, it may not, for example, we may not see a restoration of Christianity in, in our country, in our generation, but for God, mm. you know, it's, it's in His timing, mm. and we have to keep on being faithful, yeah. even though it yeah. could be a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. And just um, the passage that you've read from Kings was preceded by a few verses saying that Hezekiah did no wrong, basically, in the sight of God. God gave him success in all he did. So. We have to see this in the context, in the context of that. Of Hezekiah's I just want to make ring, a comment yes. on Chamberlain because <coughs> there's no doubt looking back on the history of the 30s, it did buy us time. Mm. But unfortunately, we have the recordings of Chamberlain mm. where he genuinely believed that Hitler was... Um, yeah. I don't believe that he was just you know, winging it, you know, and, and hoodwinking the British people. He genuinely believed that there was yeah. a chance for peace and, and he was devastated. Yeah. Yeah, and it came out in those recordings yeah. when Hitler um, Invented, cheated, yeah, cheated on him. So uh, with, with Czechoslovakia and the Sudetenland. Yeah. So yeah, but God's the providence cheating. was there. But, God, he, but, he, he, but he was trying... But Chamberlain didn't come out well at the end. No, he didn't. And I'm, no. I, but what I... From saying, his own words. What I'm saying is that, you know, history, people, the victors write their history. That's true. And sometimes, you know, yeah. the, the great benefactor of history was Winston Churchill, who succeeded yeah. Neville Chamberlain. He was like the rogue. And, and he, wrote, he, he yeah. wrote history. And yeah. if, you, if you're actually looking at Winston Churchill before mm. 
1940. He, he was, as you say, he, he, you know, he wouldn't survive in today's politics. You know, he no. was continually swapping parties, changing his mind. He was unless we meet up with another crisis. Yeah, yeah exactly uh, of the scale but, of but, uh, Hitler. The, the point I'm making was to relate what you actually, the question you it's actually very say, good. Ex, you're actually saying. And about, even the time period that yeah. we're talking about here yeah. with Hezekiah is not too dissimilar that, to exactly. that time period from the 30s. <coughs> That's right. Exactly. Up to and, war. and Tim, you're right that God looks at the totality of Hezekiah's reign. Mm. And, you know, there was, that was that one incident where he stripped the doors of the temple. He raided the, the, the temple treasuries to pay off Sennacherib. Mm. But... What we know is, not whether he was right or wrong, but what we know from the Bible is, it didn't work. No. It didn't stop mm. the king of Assyria coming back mm. and attacking Jerusalem. Mm. You can't buy off. But funnily enough, it does show that um, Hezekiah was more than generous. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was this sort of heaping of burning coals on, on the head. He, even though his enemy was there, Sennacherib was... Um, threatening him what what does Paul say you know or Jesus say love your enemies and then Paul says do good to those who curse mm. you and put mm. uh, burning coals on their heads mm. help them out mm. so it, it's 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 a wonderful thing that's obviously in military terms it looked as though Hezekiah was the poor one but he was still able to to Give show 300 that he talents had plenty of, of wealth yeah yeah. M that may have worked in the opposite with Sennacherib because he would have wanted more of, of that, as you said, another bite of the cherry. Yeah. I, I suppose the question is, is it, is it sometimes wise to compromise and, instead of st standing firm all the time? Is it, is it, do, do we have to mm. be sometimes <coughs> a compromiser? In, 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 See, compromise is always, particularly post Thatcher era, you know, compromise is seen as selling out. But mm. sometimes mm. it does compromising then give you some. Um, well, it's in that same passage in Romans 12, it says, as far as it depends on you, exactly. live at peace with all men. Absolutely. So you can go the extra mile. Yeah. You, you just, and I think it does then demonstrate the ill intent of the other. Yes. But as far as it depends on you, you can go the extra mile, give more yeah. than, you know, so that when it comes to the final reckoning, they can say, look, he, he couldn't have been more generous. And you could say that about Chamberlain again. Yeah. You could say that about Britain, that Chamberlain actually created the moral high ground for Britain to, to prosecute the war against Hitler because right. we had gone the extra mile yeah. to try and win the peace. Yeah. Well, it was, yes, okay. uh, I understand what yeah, you're saying yeah. about the, uh, and applying, no, it, to, applying yeah, it to this situation. Yeah. You know, if Hezekiah's already paid his debt and Sennacherib comes back, then Sennacherib is actually in the wrong, morally mm. speaking, mm. ethically speaking, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, under military treaty law and mm. any international law, whatever you call it, you know, that put him, the king of Assyria, in mm. the wrong. Mm. And, 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 and I'm not for any means deem offending Hitler or, no. or Sennacherib that they were the wrong, they were evil. Mm. But what I'm, actually, what I'm actually saying is sometimes you've got to try and walk in the shoes of, of, of the leader. We can judge people hundreds of years or thousands of years later and said we wouldn't have done that. Mm. But I think we probably would have done yeah. that. Mm. Uh, you, know, he, he, you know, if he was in a weak position and he needed to strengthen, mm. then sometimes you have to retreat mm. in order to... A bad general always attacks, mm. always attacks mm. and diminishes forces. A wise general knows when to retreat to mm. the strong place. Mm. And, and sometimes yeah. maybe that Hezekiah, under the providence of God, retreated compromised to retreat mm -hmm. in order for this there are many victory. by the way there are many um, this could become a metaphor for a whole load of things in in the New Testament like the yeah. Lord said to Jesus uh, to um, the Lord said to Peter those who live by the sword will die by the sword yeah Peter wanted to immediately let's say attack Sennacherib yeah. but the big battle was the conquest of sin and death yeah and, you know, get thee behind me, Satan. Don't try and do this in the flesh because in the spiritual realm, there's a much bigger battle. Yeah. Save yeah. You, keep your power to drive. <coughs> I, 
I, I, I um, wonder, for example, sometimes with this whole area of creationism, where we keep mm. banging away at this creationism, mm. banging away all the time. Mm. Uh, and, and, and this that, is why you're here, Ian. You're uh, here to challenge us on. Well, I, I, I um, think I think what, we, I think what we're doing now, is we're fighting the wrong battles. Sometimes the, the, yeah. the, ba the battle is not with one specific area mm. of the secular agenda. Mm. It's the whole secular agenda. Yeah. And whilst we're fighting over here, that battle, which inevitably mm. we're losing, mm. you know, the, 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 we're losing the whole war. Yeah. And, 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 and what I'm saying is that we need to have more generalship in our yeah. leadership, yeah. you know, to know when to fight, when to retreat, which, yeah, which, 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 is, which is the ground which we cannot give. That's true. Uh, another side, while we're yeah. digressing, um, of this argument, yeah. and this is why we're here, you know, we're slightly to take a different slight yeah. uh, take on, on we, the events. We both have the same objective. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my take on the, the whole creation issue is that it is a straw in the wind and the, or you could say a canary in the mine shaft and because the generalships and the generals of the church have neglected, they haven't been fighting that issue, they've actually conceded that foundational ground, mm. the whole world's view within which the gospel is contained Mm. is lost mm. and we're now fighting on much softer ground which is you know um, how does God work through evolution you know how does he work through you know trial and error and every time um, the theistic evolutionists come out and try and fight against the militant atheists mm. they are shot down in the open field yeah because the the strong ground is that God is the yeah. You know the author of life he's, yeah. he's the creator of everything and and I, I so i've been through this loop yeah. that you're talking about i remember reading hugh ross's books a mm. long time ago mm. as a kid and thinking wow that's very impressive you know we can defend everything you know on, a, on this scientific world mm. view and i've come round to the position that i think actually we've got to hold our position so you would have given on creation yeah, yeah. because I actually think that's the root of our problems well, today. I, I, I would say that the bigger issue <clears throat> is how evolution affects our society yes. and affects us our society with regards to abortion, with regards to uh, uh, euthanasia, with regards to our yeah. attitude to there people. Yeah. That, 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 those are the biggest bigger philosophical mm. issues which mm. we're, we're losing because we, we're constantly fighting in a small area where this whole world view of evolution is much bigger. Yeah. However, I don't want to, I don't want to, si sure I don't want to sidetrack. It, 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 no, it, it is a bearing, a bearing and, and, and it, it comes from your question, which was a, uh, completely from left field, yeah, you know, is, which, is. which, which yeah. is talking about was, uh, was Hezekiah right or wrong yeah. To, yeah. to compromise yeah. and, and, you know, but going, perhaps no, going no. back to that he question. He never of, gave up on Jerusalem. No, That's he never gave up on Jerusalem. He, but, you know, coming back to that question, uh, we, we don't know. Okay, yes, I'm not going to sort of say we know. Yeah. <clears throat> but when we come to 37 of Isaiah, we get to a point in Hezekiah's life, 14 years into his reign. He was 25 when he came on the throne. He's around 39 at this point. He's done good. The Bible says he was a great king. He uh, reinstituted temple worship. He got rid of all the um, high places. All yeah. right. So the he Lord didn't was, compromise the Lord was, on the foundational <coughs> issues. The Lord was with him. Mm. And yet, when Sennacherib came to Jerusalem the first time, he appeased. Tactic. Tactic and then he yeah. came back the second time. Yeah. And then now, yeah. in today's passage, he's in a place That's where right. I think God wants him to be, which is 100% dependency on God. Yeah. Previously, he did depend on God. Mm. Previously, he did place reliance on God yeah. in association with reliance on Egypt, yeah. in association with reliance on 300 shekels of silver, That's it. in reliance with buying off and yeah. uh, entering into treaties with his enemies. Yeah. 
And it may be the tactics of giving them some, a, a little buy them off a little enabled him to complete Hezekiah's tunnel, the water source, <laughs> which strengthened Jerusalem. A tactical retreat is not that bad a, a, a thing like AI. Um, you know, uh, Joshua went in, they, they fainted, as it were, a retreat, and then mm. they were able to draw in mm. the forces to then destroy them. That's right. And the point that God wanted him to get to was for him to tear his clothes, mm -hmm. cover himself in sackcloth, and go into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's three things. That's what it says. And so it was when King Hezekiah heard it, that he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We need constantly to be in that position, mm -hmm. figuratively speaking. Mm -hmm. We need all the time to be in a mode of prayer, prayer at all, pray at all times. Mm. This is where the Lord wants us to be. Not stripping the temple of the gold to buy off the enemy, yeah. but to be in the house of God mm. in an attitude of prayer. Yeah. He got there eventually. Mm. Eventually, he got to the end mm. of himself. Mm. He got to the end of what he can, there's nothing else <clears throat> he can do. Mm. He was stuck. He was in a dead end. He was cornered, right, basically. So then he uh, sent Eliakim, uh, Shebna, um, and the elders of priests covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Yeah. Yeah, to hear God's what response. Does God have to say about yeah, this. Because Hezekiah was saying, look, it's a terrible report that I've just heard. Yeah. Let, let's, let's see God's response to it. Two things I can pick up from these verses, which I find quite interesting. First of all, you're quite right. He, he, when he came to an end of himself, he went into the house of the Lord. He demonstrated his penitence by wearing sackcloth. In, in that. And then he, he went to um, Isaiah. Which, but what I find is interesting here is the distance between Hezekiah and God. Let me explain what I mean here. It says, it may be that the Lord, not my God, but the Lord, your God. In other words, in other words, Hezekiah still didn't have that personal, confident relationship. He wasn't, the Lord wasn't his God, or didn't, he didn't feel mm -hmm. close enough to the Lord. And so mm -hmm. to actually call him my God. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, he needed an intercessor to go and intercede for him, and that was Isaiah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, just stepping back again, we, we've been hearing these prophecies and woes of Isaiah, and now Isaiah's in the story. Yeah. Was Isaiah, uh, how, how can you envisage Isaiah writing this? about himself. It's, it's, it's a challenging thing to do when one minute he's, he's the uh, third party, as it were, and now he's, he's there in the narrative. Mm. That's right. But remember, there's a, there's a huge age difference between Isaiah and Hezekiah. Hezekiah, 39, relatively young man. Mm. Isaiah would have been an old man by this time because he'd been you know, in, in service to God. Mm. Uh, you know, um, the three previous kings. Mm. Um, and so he would have been like an elder statesman, you know, uh, possibly being treated as retired or semi-retired, which is why they sent for him. Mm -hmm. He wasn't walking around, you know, uh, weaving in and out of the palace and the temple and, <clears throat> you know, he was a, a, an older man by this time. So they called upon him. You know, bring him out of retirement, as it were, something like that. You know, not, not literally, but you know what I mean. Mm. And uh, what you said was, you know, your God, your Lord, your... Mm. Why? Why? Mm. It, it must be because there was a perception within Hezekiah that his understanding of God was different and perhaps not as complete mm. 
not as rounded as Isaiah's understanding mm. and knowledge and intimate relationship mm. with God. Yeah. That's that. It's not that Hezekiah didn't know God. He went into the temple of the Lord. Yeah. Mm. He was praying. And later on, we know he actually prayed. You know, he turned his face to the Lord. So it's not that he didn't have a personal relationship with God, but his relationship with God was different from Isaiah's, and he yeah. acknowledged that. Yeah. I, I, what came across to me as I was reading this was, in this situation, Isaiah was taking a role of a priest. He, he was basically interceding with, with, with God and Hezekiah. Mm. And, uh, and it's interesting how he does it in, in, in the subsequent verses, in that Hezekiah says, there's no hope, basically. You know, mm. we're at the end of our tether. Uh, and then Isaiah listens and basically says, no, this is what's going to happen. And I, and I find that is an important role, a priestly role, uh, which, you know, th the believer has in taking someone who is either an unbeliever or in the case of Hezekiah, a, a tentative believer, someone who believes but doesn't quite feel close enough to God and, and, and taking the, the, the word of the Lord and using this to encourage, to, to strengthen mm. uh, the, the, you know, the backbone of those people. Mm. And I think that's an important role. I mean, one of the great doctrines of the Reformation is the priesthood of all believers. When we had the Reformation, Martin Luther 500 years ago, he, he wanted to get rid of the, the, the priest who was seen as the only interceder between God and man. And, and the doctrine that came out of that was, through Calvin and Zwingli, was the doctrine of the priesthood of all believers in that all of us can be priests mm. to the unbeliever and to the weak believer. Yeah. And I think there's a model here when people come when they're going through a tough time, when mm. circumstances are run, is, is for us to actually say, look, we've got to minister to them. Mm. We've got to be an intercessor, an interceder between God mm. and, and them. The interesting thing is that Hezekiah actually communicated with Isaiah through his officials. Yes, yes. So he's even one step removed. Yeah. He was, he, you're right, he was slightly distant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but well, then Isaiah was able to communicate back you, through the officials. Do you think there was an element of shame in Hezekiah? He, didn't, well, he yes. couldn't face up to Isaiah. Yeah, I think that's probably it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a fair comment. And you, know, and you were asking uh, previously yeah. a question, you know, how, 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 could, uh, how, how was Isaiah feeling when he's writing himself into the history yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead of being a... Th because uh, up to now, you know, uh, what we have are the writings of his um, sermons, effectively, yeah. or his songs. Yeah, that's he wrote right. a lot of songs, and, right. and, and a lot of Isaiah is in the form of songs. Yeah. Now it's in the form of yeah. narrative history. And just, <coughs> uh, uh, um, just uh, another step back. The, the songs, were they written chronologically before these narratives, these interspersed narratives, or was it sort of pasted together by Isaiah at the end of his life, or what, what do you think about that? I, I think it's generally, it's, it's generally accepted that they're not necessarily yeah. chronological. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. cannot read Isaiah from yeah. chapter 1 to 66 yeah. and expect it to be chronological. Yeah. It isn't. It just yeah. isn't. I, kn I know we've, we've discussed this very early on in Isaiah, yeah. but we, we are settled that it was Isaiah that wrote. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Some would say, oh, because he's in the story, how could he possibly have written it? Yeah. yeah, but I, there's I no reason that. why not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, you, you have you have first, second, third Isaiah, and the theory from the liberal point of view is that scholars wrote yeah. the second, third Isaiah. Mm. If I can remember rightly, mm. I, um, I have to go back into mm. my studies there. But but the other view is that they are the writings of Isaiah, but they've been edited by yeah. and. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, you know, Isaiah doesn't have to write every word well, in, in the sense that they can be edited and still be the, the know, word of I, God. Yes. The word of God. Yeah. As Psalms, lots of Psalms have been edited. Yeah. Mm. You know, yeah. because during the captivity, they took a Psalm of David and then they added a bit at the end, saying, "Oh yeah. God, save us." Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. obvious. That's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't need to. But what we're not saying is is that um, it's 
uh, an inaccurate or oh, no, it's, it's been that, cooked up no. for, what, you know, what, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, and that's the when it says that, Isaiah, the, it's Isaiah. When it's Hezekiah, it's Hezekiah. That's the important thing. First of all, you've got to trust. If if it says it, you trust it. If not, and you, when he says, "Thus saith the Lord," yeah, that's a, that we discussed that the, a few the, weeks the, ago. The other thing is that, of course, liberal scholars then say, "Well, it can't be prophecy. It was written after the event because it's so accurate." It's because it's so accurate. Now, now that not only undermines our understanding of the Word of God. It, it, it also under it also calls into question the, the the veracity of the people who put together the Bible. The, you know that they, they they were deliberate deceivers, yeah. uh, and you know we cannot accept Which that. Which undermines so, the absolute yeah. heart of uh, all of Scripture. And of yeah. course, that's where some people are at. That's why they they yeah. take this view. Yeah. I would even go further and say it is not incompatible with believing Scripture to be the Word of God, and actually say that. Isaiah wrote, uh, you know, scrolls. He wrote songs and they yeah. were put into scrolls. And somebody else, like Ezra, actually gathered them together later yeah. Yeah. and put them in yeah. what they thought was a, a logical yeah. sequence. Mm. All right? And that's not incompatible with saying this is the Word of God. Right. So I personally say this is the Word of God. It is accurate. It is reliable. And when it says Hezekiah, it's Hezekiah. When it says Isaiah, it's Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah. When it says the Lord says thus, right. the Lord said thus. Yeah. That was yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. Because I don't, we say that all Scripture is God breathed, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and so that would completely undermine Paul saying yeah. that. Yeah. If, if it wasn't God breathed, then if say yeah. instead of Ezra putting it together, Sennacherib yeah. would put it together. You yeah. know, then yeah. we're really on dodgy ground. Yeah. That it was cooked up somewhere in Babylon yeah. or or <coughs> in Assyria. It, the important reason is why we call the Bible the Word of God is it's God speaking. And, you know, yeah, whilst God spoke through Isaiah, there's no reason why he can't speak through the scribe who scribed, yeah. pulled things together. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing. And the monks who transcribed the monks, it, the, monks you know, the way it's conveyed through history <coughs> exactly. is a miracle it's, in it's itself. The important yeah. thing is that it is God speaking into our mm -hmm. generation yeah. Yeah. yeah, with authority. Mm. So Hezekiah is at the end of his tether. So this is what he says to Isaiah through the three men. This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. That's interesting because he says those three things. A day of trouble, well, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're both about to get wiped off the face of the earth. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, that's trouble. Rebuke, rebuke, and I get blasphemy as well. Blasphemy is where you know God's name is uh, mm. taken in vain. Mm. Okay, and Senegr uh, the Rabshaka is saying, "Well, God told me to come and you know attack you." Yeah. So that's blasphemy. Rebuke, rebuke. That's interesting for me. Mm. It's a day of trouble, day of rebuke, and a day of blasphemy. Mm. And we as Christians, I keep saying this, <laughs> you know, like a broken record, we have to expect opposition. If we do God's work, there will be the adversary who comes against us to try and prevent us doing God's work. And that adversary could be somebody as close to you as Peter was to Jesus. Mm. Because when Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem, as you said, Peter said, this will not happen to you. Get behind me, Satan, you mm. quoted that just now. Mm. We need to expect the trouble, the rebuke, and the blasphemy. Yeah. But the rebuke, see, there's a hint that Hezekiah has done something wrong. You see? I'm in trouble, but it might not be my fault. There's, other people are blaspheming God, not necessarily my fault. But rebuke implies Hezekiah acknowledges that he may have done something wrong. Yeah. And then, okay. yeah, carry on, Ian. Yeah, follow. Okay, in, in verse 4, we going on, we see, as it were, the, still a, a limited understanding of Hezekiah, who God is. He says, it may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of, of the Rabbi Shaka, uh, whom the master of the king of Syria sent. In, in other words, he, he still had a, you know, the, the other nations had these gods, you know, and, he, and, and I think he still hadn't quite grasped that, you know, that Yahweh is the creator of the earth. And he sort of said, well, was he around when he heard, when, when, 
when the king of Syria's messenger came and said, did he actually hear this? And he was, it was sort of like a, the, the God was small. Slightly naive. Slightly naive, yeah. slightly, he yeah. had a limited view of God, yeah. right? And, and it was up to Isaiah to correct him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's sort of, it may be that the Lord has heard. Of course the Lord has heard yeah. this. Yes. He's completely worked out how Sennacherib is going to fall. Yeah. And, and this bit, therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Mm. Reminds me of a Saul, you know, the first king of Israel, asking Samuel to pray for him. Mm. And Samuel's answer was, I never cease to pray for you. Mm. I mm. never cease to pray. And yes, this is a prayer request. Mm. You know, this is a prayer request for Isaiah to pray for the remnant that is left. Yeah. Okay, should we um, switch over now to, the, to what's happened with Sennacherib? Because it, it didn't all happen at once, did it? No. The, the, the fulfillment of the prophecy. Uh, he then, at you know, verse nine, he receives reports, um, but Sennacherib's not going to cow, is he? Be cowed. Mm. <laughs> By any threat of, of an army from the south, or is he? <coughs> he he's still in his arrogant mood, uh, basically saying, you know, uh, further on, did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my forefathers deliver them? Mm. You know, in other words. Well, he, his attitude was this is a slight digression, mm. uh, a, a slight diversion from. Coming, yeah. I'm coming back, yeah. you know, just because I'm going over to deal with some other matter yeah. doesn't mean I'm not going to come back and deal with you and finish you off. Mm. You know, you had your warning, yeah. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting to compare price. this chapter, the last chapter, the, you know, this, this basic dictator uh, was, was threatening, this bully was threatening the nation. And what did he do? He says, oh, no, you'll have your own fig tree, you'll, you know, and you, you, you know, you'll, You'll have your own grapevine, yeah. and you know you live in peace. And suddenly, when when there was this defiance, his face is shown to exactly who he is, mm. and says, "Don't you think that I, you know, you I will not conquer you, mm. you know?" Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but you, uh, just putting ourselves in Sennacherib's shoes, yeah. you know, like every tyrant of history, he's overextended himself, yes. and he must be thinking, "Oops." <laughs> You know, he's just got to that point. I know he's not saying that, but you just wonder, you know, all of these people, they just overextend themselves. They do, Instead but they, of they never real, their pride prevents them from realizing. And they still that. believe. That's yeah. what I want to try and unpack, yeah. you know. Yeah, they, did he, wh at which point did Sennacherib think, you know, I've, I've done it I now. I think so. The, he, yeah. he got murdered. Yeah. You know, so... The, By his own family. Yeah. Uh, that must mean that he never even acknowledged his own weakness mm. for them to actually go to those lengths to mm. get rid of him. Mm. You, you don't murder somebody who's frail and, you know, about to mm. keel over. You murder somebody at the height of their power and at the height of their mm. megalomania or whatever it is okay. that's, you know, that the family seeing this guy is overextend, you know, whatever reason. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, other people may you know, don't write in, and other people may say, well, no, it's because he um, uh, appointed the younger son to be his successor rather than that, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I get all that. I, mm. I'm not sort of, mm. you know, but he was still in charge, mm. and they wanted to get rid of him mm. in, in that state. So, it, yes, so there's a, still a lot of bluster coming yeah, yeah. from Sennacherib. pride. Pride, but yeah. I, I, we always sort of think of more contemporary examples of, of what's happened. And, you know, we've talked about Hitler, but, but then even more recently with Saddam, you know, he sort of plows into Q8 and it's mm. not exactly the same because, but you just wonder what's going on in the minds of these people and can they be reached? <laughs> or have they reached that, that point of iniquity where they blasphemed against the Holy Spirit and there's that, no that's way That's what back. Jesus said. Jesus said, oh, you know, sin will be forgiven and blaspheming will be forgiven, but not against the Holy Spirit. Mm. And mm. how can we know? How can we humans so know? So actually the way he, he took God's name in vain yeah. and claimed that God had spoken to him, that's a sort of blasphemy yeah. against the Holy Spirit. 
I mean, history doesn't show that tyrants, you know, have any self-awareness. Mm. You know, they, <laughs> yeah. they, 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 yeah. they are just so full of themselves. That's yeah. how they got to be tyrants. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, the latest one is the leader of the North Korea. You know, yeah. you know he means what he says, that he's going to... He's third generation. Yeah, he, 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 he actually tyrant. believes he can defeat... Yeah. You know, America. the United States of America. Mm. You know, he actually believes it, and mm. probably he will destroy his nation mm. uh, as a result of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, dare we mention Putin? Mm. You know, we've mentioned how, you know, Hitler went into the Sea Dayton land, but when you think of how Putin went into South Ossetia, mm -hmm. you know, tested the border there, and the, and the West basically caved in, mm -hmm. then he pushes down you know, across into Crimea, grabs it, yeah. then pushes into Ukraine, and now he's sort of doing exercises on the, the borders of the Baltic states. At but which point I would does say, he get the message? I know, but I would say that he was still being very cautious. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't do more than one border at a time. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is a mistake Germany made, and just trying to, you know... Yeah, he's, he's quite shrewd, yeah. you know, and he finds the West when they're at a weak point. Yeah. You know, we didn't make a decision over Syria and the atrocities of Assad. He came in, and, mm. uh, you know, because, uh, you know, Syria, the barrel bombs with the chemical weapons. He comes in, and he's basically got Syria on the cheap. Yeah. While we're talking about the area of Assyria, you know, it's all still happening today. There are... Yeah, much more confusing I, battles going I, I'm on today. Try, but I'm trying to be fair. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not. Mm. I, I have Ukrainian friends who, yeah. who basically <coughs> who are quite upset with Putin and that. So I'm not. Mm. I'm trying, but I'm trying to be fair. I, I would not compare no. Putin to no. one of these uh, dictators we see around the world. Uh, he, he seems to be reasoned mm. and and open to mm. reason. Um, it is a far more complex world yeah, where, than whereas, it was. Whereas you see the type of dictator uh, yeah. who was Sennacherib, you know, he was bluster. He was yeah. basically, he, he was so proud. He was not going to compromise. No. And, and those are the most dangerous types of yeah. uh, dictator. Which, which and he was. He did have the overwhelming power yeah. of, of the day. And yeah. so that can build up hubris I mean, and we, arrogance. <laughs> And I suppose it's a way of actually judging situations. You know, you can actually put all people who, in the leaders of the world who we disagree with in the same box. But, you know, is the leaders of Iraq, sorry, Iran, the same as the leaders of, you know, Persia. Is Russia? Yeah. Or, oh, or, yeah. or, you know, is the leader of Syria the same as uh, is a, a leader of North Korea, you know? Notice I'm trying to avoid no. saying their names. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, I always but get But they're all, yeah, because you never know whether it was yeah, yeah. Kim Jong-il or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Or but, 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 <laughs> yeah, but, but, but the point I'm making is this, is that there has to be a, a way of actually judging, you know, whether yeah. you can deal with these people or whether the compromise... But there are common the, traits. The, whether the compromise will lead eventually to your downfall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, it is to do with pride and arrogance. It's mm. to do with what's coming out in these mm. verses mm. here. It, it's to do, you know, someone who is proud and arrogant, who cannot even begin to perceive his mm. own weakness, mm. has no self-awareness, then in the end, they have to be defeated. Yeah. And, not, and not, are not, they submitted to God? So yeah. comparing Hezekiah, the yeah. righteous king, yeah. in humility, acknowledging who God is. In other words, someone who's transcendent above them, to whom they're accountable for all of their deeds, yeah. Yeah. or those who believe they are God, yeah. and they're well, not accountable to anyone. <clears throat> that's right, and that's that's where the Romans, you know, came from, yeah. and they they were sort of saying, "We are gods." Yeah, yeah. the emperor, imperial yeah. cult. <clears throat> um, but the good news for us in this passage, mm. you know, the, the the takeaway for me, is that less. Uh, assume Isaiah, uh, Hezekiah did something wrong. Well, we're not even saying he did something wrong, but even, you know, if he had done something wrong in appeasing Sennacherib, he went and to the house of the Lord yeah. in humility. Yeah. 
And that's what God, God couldn't care less what you've done in the past at the point of repentance. Yeah. This is the good news. At mm. the point of repentance, He forgives and forgets what you've been doing before. Mm. So whether He's been sending the treasuries of the, 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 the house of God, the, te the temple, and stripping the gold from the mm. doors, and mm. even mm. if it's all that was wrong for Him to have done, mm. All God looks at is, where is he now? Yeah. Yeah. And he's torn his clothes, he's in sackcloth, and he's in the temple. Mm. And where's his heart going forwards? Yes. You know, is, it, is, it, is it just, again, a tactical retreat in terms of his relationship with God, or is his heart absolutely set in, in one direction? And with all of our failings, we are determined to follow the Lord. That's right. Even though we know that we're going to slip up. And, and, and I know that uh, in a you know, recent study, I, I um, um, previously cited, you know, Jesus saying the two men that went up into the temple, you know, the Pharisee and the, the tax collector. And the tax collector was the one who left justified because he said, God, forgive me, a sinner. Mm. And that is where Hezekiah was. Mm. And Isaiah's answer acknowledged Hezekiah's position. So, Ian, we've had Alan's takeaway from today's Bible, so you've got a few minutes no, left. I, 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 what, what would you I, say? I, is, I, I'm sad and I've listened, and it's, it's been an excellent, um, yeah. you know, an excellent historical and biblical understanding of the context, which I think is always helpful mm. to revisit that. Mm. And I, but just, I'm always trying to, to think what is God saying? Mm. in all this mm. you know what is he saying to us today you know yeah. we, 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 we we've talked about you know is it sometimes good to retreat in order to advance is it sometimes wise yeah mm. is it sometimes do we cut the point where we have to confront the bully and the mm. tyrant we have to do that the the thing the only overall thing that came out and it probably it's too big a subject is this is here we have a nation facing disaster and we have a king, Hezekiah, who, yes, is a follower of Yahweh, but he is a distant follower of Yahweh, even though he's commended in many ways. You know, the, the, the way he addresses God and the way he, he suggests that he's not quite there. But yet he goes to the temple and he prays. He realizes that the hope is not in him, not in the chariots, not in the, the walls of Jerusalem but the hope is in God, mm. turning to God in prayer. Mm. And I suppose that speaks to us in, mm. in our day and age mm. as, as a nation, uh, that, that um, we have a prime minister who uh, is, is a Christian, you mm. know, who, who goes to church every Daughter single, of a vicar. Daughter of a vicar. And, and I know that it's not politically correct, but we face a, a, a unprecedented uh, issues in our nation's mm. history at this moment in time. And I think what we need to do is, is you know, be called to prayer, turn to the Lord. Mm. It would be great if we had sackcloth and ashes from the politicians and saying, look. Mm. It's we, very we, rare. Yeah. She did say sorry at the yeah. last Conservative conference, yeah, but, which is rare. Yeah. The, the point, point I'm making is that our deliverance will not come in politics. I think I've said this in numerous times. and and in our Bible studies, you know, and I think Christians need to be aware the solution to our problems is not in the Conservative Party or the Labour Party or the Liberal Democrats or UKIP or anything. The solution is not in there. Yeah. The solution is us yeah. turning to the Lord. And that's the yeah. lesson yeah. that we see here. Great. That, that we see here. Thank you very much, yeah. Well, as uh, uh, John Pantry from another channel premiere, wrote in his songwriting days, I don't belong to Maggie and I don't belong to Jim. <laughs> and, then, and then they said, um, and he mentions Lenin, and he says that we can run around in circles, but we belong to yeah. him. I belong to you. And I think if we have that as our perspective, we'll be able to face down the Sennacheribs and we'll understand where Hezekiah is coming from and in humility, turn to the Lord and we'll see you next week. Thank you.